In my village, many were killed, but my son had just been born, so we have only now been able to escape. We haven't had time to name him. What's going on in Myanmar? Why have you had to flee? Another man we came across spoke of violence and murder. On the way, we saw many dead people, their heads and limbs chopped off. The slaughter took place house by house. As we drew closer to the border, nothing had prepared us for the full extent of the day's exodus. <coughs> Almost as far as the eye could see, left and right, a tide of humanity. Between 10 and 15,000 people had crossed the border in one night. Young and old, hungry, exhausted, traumatized. And for the weak, it's a painful journey into exile with the searing heat stinging the skin infection of this child beneath an unrelenting sun. They'd been hiding out for close to a week to avoid detection along the border. This, a first meal without having to watch their backs. A man makes a call to tell relatives he's made it while others, parched and desperate, take their chance with the filthy water all around. Well, as you can see, they're carrying with them whatever they could salvage from their villages, their homes that they say they were burnt out of by the Myanmar military. Look at that little baby there in, in a basket. And there's another one here on the other side. So many young children we're seeing here today. This has to be one of the biggest single-day influxes of refugees from across the border, just over there in the whole of this crisis. Many just don't have the strength to walk, including Minara Begum. She gave birth to a healthy baby boy just hours before crossing into Bangladesh. Born on a riverbank, he first opened his eyes to see a cruel world in which it seems there's no place for him or the other Rohingya Muslims. I begged God to save us, her husband Mohammed tells me. We hadn't eaten for two days.